Hi guys, Brett Warren here. Uh, I'm going to be on the online prosperity show shortly. I'm going to be talking about the importance of uh, having someone on your side, having a, a property representative, a property strategist that's going to work for you. Uh, and Prosper is going to put me under the pump and ask me a lot of questions. So I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the property strategist himself, Brett. Brett, how are you doing, my man? Hey, Prosper. Hey, going? Good to be with you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. And um, viewers, you might um, you know, be an enterprising entrepreneur that's doing so well for themselves and you're looking for an investment avenue or vehicle that... Um, you know, you might use to double, triple or quadruple your income right now. Property is not a bad thing to look into. And um, that's the reason why we brought in Brett from Metropole Buyers Advocates. Yeah. Um, you know, they're property consultants that actually work on your behalf so that they can devise a property investment solution when you're buying either a home or an investment. And they're not just selling you a property. They're actually working with you all the way there. Now, Brett, thank you so much for your time today. Tell us a little bit about what your job entails as a buyer's agent. Sure, uh, sure, Prof. Well, look, our service is a, a property strategy service, and obviously there's a lot of different uh, ways to invest your money, and property is one of them. And within property, there's obviously a lot of different ways to invest as well. And uh, what we specialize in doing is, is, is actually growing an asset base and creating wealth for our clients. So we don't like to speculate. Um, we like to follow proven and, and trusted and known strategies, um, high capital growth vehicles, blue chip assets um, that are going to create wealth. We don't gamble with our clients' money. We make sure we put it into areas that are going to perform well. Um, and as a result, uh, as you said, um, you know, by holding those assets over time, adding value to them, um, you can end up substantially further ahead over the long term. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that uh, response. Now, Brett, there are websites like um, real estate or domain that I can just simply go on and, you know, look at what houses are available. And, you know, if there's an auction, I can just go and raise my hand. And if they, you know, look at me and pick me up, then they say, hi, yes, Prosper, what have you got to say? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm voting for this house. Um, why would I have to pay money when I can do it myself the way I just explained to you that? Yeah, good question. Um, there's two sides of the coin there. Obviously, for an investor, um, the most important thing um, at the end of the day is the actual property itself. So you've got to get the location right. Before you actually turn up at auction, you've got to know the demographics of the area, the incomes, uh, public transport, make sure you're close to employment hubs. Uh, are you in a good school catchment? All these types of things can add one, two, three extra percentage points of capital growth um, to that particular asset. Um, so, you know, if you're getting a three or four percent better return out of a, 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 an investment over a 10 year period, that, that could mean hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the, the end process is, is, uh, is part of it, but um, there's so much before we actually purchase a property and that's where the strategy side comes in. And uh, although it's mainly for investors, a lot of homeowners like, uh, you know, your home's going to be your bigger, biggest asset for some people. So. Once again, if you're holding your home for 10 or 20 years, you want to make sure it's getting good capital growth and, and growing in value faster than other opportunities. Understandable. So in, in all these things that you, you will be doing this um, for your clients, what else would you be doing besides just you know, making sure the property is in the right location, is in the right street, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's the right investment um, you know, instrument? Yeah, good question. Um, look, a part of the process obviously is assessing their portfolio and people may have maybe two or three properties already. Um, are they worth holding over the longer term? Um, are they going to be in high capital growth areas? Uh, you know, if you're based in Sydney or Brisbane or Melbourne, um, do you have all your assets in, in one basket or all your properties in Brisbane or all your properties in Melbourne? So there's a need to diversify your portfolio as well. And, and we're Australia wide. So I have no hesitation if a client in Brisbane has two or three assets and properties in Brisbane to refer them to Sydney or Melbourne because it's that long-term capital growth and that diversification we need. Um, as part of the process also, um, we like to add value to property. So if you're looking at 
investing. And one of the one of the good things and one of the uh, standout points with property is is property is the only asset you can actually add value to. Uh, it's very difficult to do that with shares and stocks and bonds, but with property, you know, a cosmetic renovation, a development, um, something like that can add considerable value to a property. And, um, you know, rather than, uh, than paying overs for a property, we prefer to buy a property at a good price and, and add that value. And that's something we help our clients with as well. Understandable. So most of the people wouldn't realize that maybe they really need these services because if you don't have an experienced person who's in the trenches knowing what um, you know, areas are good for investment. And if you don't know what is considered a cosmetic, um, you know, appraisal of your property, they might be losing out, um, you know, on money on whatever purchases they might be making um, out there. Now, what other mistakes do you find maybe first time investors or even seasoned investors that are not going through a service like yours um, are making in the marketplace there? Yeah, sure. Look, they, they tend to, sometimes they tend to overpay. Um, you know, they, they, they've they probably been to three or four auctions. They've been in the market for a couple of months and they just want to get the next opportunity that comes up. They're not patient enough um, to be able to wait that period and find out exactly what they're looking for. Um, that can be a big, a big um, mistake that people make. Um, and also just, like I said before, uh, you know, buying where they know or, or, or buying so it's close to where they live or something like that. Um, you know, that, that's a, while it's handy to be able to visit a property and things like that, it's not handy if it's, uh, if it's, a, it's a poor asset and not performing well. And probably the biggest mistake people make is not having the right strategy. Um, there's so much short-term focus this day, these days on cash flow and trying to create something in the next two or three years. People should really be looking 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ahead if you're lucky enough to to be able to put a strategy out that far and work towards that strategy, grow an asset base, add value to it. Um, I think that's the biggest mistake people make is not, not looking far enough ahead. Understandable. So, you know, I also hear in your industry, when you don't have a buyer's agent, you would never hear of all the silent sales that happen under the covers or under the carpet. How do you guys get a wind of those? Yeah, good question. Look, we've, um, we've been in the market here in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. The market we specialise in here is about 10 to 12 kilometres from the CBD. Uh, we only focus on about 18 or 20 suburbs. And as you can imagine, because we've been buying in those suburbs for the last 10 years, we've built up good relationships with agents. Um, sometimes we get a, a pre-market inspection. Maybe they're taking photos on the Tuesday before they launch it on the Friday. Um, other times we're luckier, people, maybe they're going through a messy divorce or, you know, there's a little old lady who, who doesn't want people through her home and um, people on the agent's database will be the first to find out about those properties. And uh, once you become a, a known and, and you're a serious buyer, um, agents will turn to you in those kinds of times as well. Great stuff. Well, that's yet another advantage of knowing, you know, your services there, Brent, because I wouldn't know even if next door was selling and I would have wanted to just extend up until I see a sign out and it's already too late because somebody may have been given that offer there. Um, that's pretty cool. Now, yes, maybe people are going through a divorce like you're talking about and then maybe there's too much uh, overheads or the property is just not maybe a right fit or, you know, a right sort of um, uh, addition to, 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 to the strategy that you might have. Is there any sort of properties that you don't recommend people should purchase? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, generally off the plan, um, in this type of market it is quite a poor purchase. Um, brand new is difficult as well. If you're buying a house and land package brand new and things like that, there's, there's a lot of developers kickbacks and, um, you know, fees paid and stuff like that. Um, you know, secondhand properties, uh, there's always a true market value because they're on the market. And generally, um, they'll have a good intrinsic land value as well, uh, you know, closer in. So big apartments, three or 400 in a complex, things like that. Um, it's all about buying the right kind of property and the new properties and the big complexes. And especially in Brisbane at the moment, we've got a large oversupply of those types of apartments. Uh, we want to try and steer clear of those uh, for our investors and clients and things like that. Understandable. And I do understand that, um, you know, when, when, when property is going in season, it does take some sort of a cycle where it's a good place to buy. And I hear Brisbane is sort of tipping at the time we're talking, this is the 19th of the 10th in 2017. 
Brisbane is showing an upward uh, trajectory. What does that where, do, where does that place it in your you know experience and um, you know knowledge of you know the markets right now? Sure, sure. Look, um, obviously Melbourne and Sydney have done particularly well over the last couple of years. I'm probably looking at a property clock. Sometimes people like to use the property clock, Prosper, and that's probably a good analogy. Um, Sydney's probably at the 12 o'clock. It's, it's had a fairly good run, and I think the first time in a while it's, the growth has slowed and, and there's been a little bit of negative growth. So that's probably about 12 o'clock. Melbourne's probably about 11. I think there's still some upside there. Um, while Brisbane has been fairly quiet, but we're starting to see some green shoots. Uh, employment starting to get better. Our population starting to grow. Our, our employment hubs are expanding. Um, so Brisbane's at about 10 o'clock, and there's probably a fair, fairly you know, reasonable amount of growth still left there, and it's fairly affordable still in Brisbane as well. Understandable. So for, for a first-time person who's never really known of the existence of you know, um, a buyer's advocate. We have actually learned that you guys literally hold the customer's hand and show them the kind of property they should purchase, then show them um, all the downfalls and the advantages of where they're going to be purchasing and what kind of property they should purchase and um, also what area they should um, specialize in, which is, you know, pretty much taking off the whole lot of, you know, going through and, and searching for a property. Do you also guys help with um, the finance side of things? Yeah, obviously property's our specialty. Uh, we don't have finance in-house, but we, we don't really deal with banks or high street brokers. We prefer to deal with finance strategists who deal specifically with property. So there's a lot of people who'll, who'll uh, get you a loan for a boat and a car and a house and things like that. We, we're specifically focused on uh, finance strategists who can actually put a plan together and understand it's not just about the interest rate, but they're not looking at the loan here. They're looking at the next loan and the next loan to make sure you're set up correctly for that also. Understandable. So obviously some people have strategies to build 10 homes in 10 years. And um, that's where that strategy would then come in. Now, you also have a process that you take people through. It's an eight-step process that you guys have uh, designed. Um, can you just walk us through that? And then, um, you know, so we can get a clear understanding of how you guys operate and how people can actually um, get the most out of your services. Sure, the first, the first situation is actually to understand where the client is. Uh, before we go and purchase a property, um, a lot of buyers agents are order takers. If you tell them to buy a $500,000 property, they'll go and do it. We actually take a step back and assess your situation and find out where you are and assess your portfolio. Um, then the second thing is we'll implement some of those changes and, and um, you know, put them into practice. Then we'll obviously go and um, look at your finance. So finance is a big part of things at the moment. Um, so step three is actually sending you to finance, understanding your borrowing capacity um, and also understanding your comfort level. People may be able to borrow, you know, seven or $800,000, but their borrowing capacity might only be five or $600,000, which is absolutely fine. Uh, once we have that in place, we have um, you know, the opportunity to, to acquire the property, whether it be an auction, on-market opportunities, off-market opportunities. Uh, and then once we've purchased the property, uh, we also have uh, the preference and the option to add some value to it. Um, so as we talked about, it might be a small cosmetic renovation um, to increase the cash flow, increase the rental return, bring depreciation back into play, and overall add some value to that property. And once that's actually been completed, we can actually then rent the property out. So we get our property management team involved, um, which they're involved during the whole process to minimize that downtime. Once that's done, there's, there's continuing education and follow-up. So we're not just a transactional business. Um, we like to talk to our clients at least every six or 12 months to see how their portfolio is going. It may be time for a renovation. It might be time to buy another property. Um, they may have another three or four properties in Brisbane or Sydney, so it might be time to buy elsewhere. So then the process starts again and um, we can maybe able to extract some equity out and, and potentially you know, use it for another deposit for another property and things like that. And it, it's just a continual process. Understandable. Thank you so much for that. It, it actually uh, makes sense now that you are you know, taking it step by step and breaking it out. Because just like um, finances, just like nutrition, all of these investment instruments, a lot of people dabble. They don't quite understand what is expected of them and, you know, how to actually 
get the most out of it. Now, if you're watching this show today, um, you would understand, you know, that's the reason why we bring in experts like Brett that, that actually know what it is that they're doing. And, you know, you would get the most, you know, out of your money if you're going to choose to invest in a market like Brisbane or in Melbourne or in Sydney. Now, how can people get a hold of you there, Brett? Um, you know, yeah, look, uh, Brett Warren is on Facebook, Brisbane Trusted Resource. Uh, obviously, BrisbaneBuyersAgent.com is our website or, or Metropole.com.au. So um, there are a couple of different ways. And we are obviously got a, an office here in Brisbane. Um, but look, you're more than welcome to contact me on, on, a, on any forum. And uh, I'm, I'm always up to talk about property, as you know, Prosper. So. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, you know, for somebody who is probably just starting and, you know, they're probably arming and ahhing about, you know, where to begin or how they should get around to it. What sort of advice have you got for them? Yeah, sure. Look, um, you know, I've been in this situation myself. I was a 22 year old man at one stage and thought I knew everything as most people do at that age. Um, but the first thing I probably should have done back then was actually seek advice from a professional. Um, you know, I think that's, that's very underrated. You're about to spend anywhere from two, three, four hundred to a million plus on a property, so it makes sense to actually seek some professional assistance. Um, and to do that, make sure you speak to someone who's independent and, and has no vested interest. So we obviously don't get kickbacks from developers and uh, you know property people and stuff like that. We're completely independent, we work for our clients. So it's important to have someone who is unbiased, who, who's been in the market for a long time and, and knows that market very well and has a good reputation. Understandable. Well, Brett, thank you so much for your time because um, you've given us an insight as to, you know, how not to actually fail uh, at life and how to actually not fail in investments because, you know, as a buyer's agent or you as a buyer's advocate, you know, most of what you do is you're the opposite of a selling, um, you know, agent and because your work is to actually, you know, work with the investor and with the best interests at heart. So thank you so much for your time. And if you haven't, um, you know, subscribed to this channel, please do so that you can also get to see and hear experts like Brett, um, you know, giving us all this um, nice strategies that can help us have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And in this instance, have a happier existence because now we're happy. We've got investments going in there. Thank you so much, Brett, for your time today. Thanks, Prosper. Love the show and uh, thanks very much for having me on. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you.